Do you guys remember when Durant Mill was actually a deck and people were actually scared to play against it because Devour just seemed too strong? Being able to discard your opponent's deck based on how many Durant were in play was absolutely insane at the time. Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Alright, so I asked you guys very politely what you wanted to see over on Twitter when it came to post-rotation. I mean, Temporal Forces is literally right around the corner, and out of all the decks, you guys chose Great Tusk. Now, I don't blame you, this deck is absolutely amazing, and recently it placed 12th at the Champions League over in Japan, piloted by Takeru Yamano. Hopefully I didn't butcher that name, but this deck is actually interesting, and it's generating a lot of love and maybe a lot of hate from certain players, because this deck is gonna see play. So this isn't the exact 60 from the Champions League, this is uh, close to it, but there are there's one major minor difference, depending on how you want to look at it, that I will talk about, but let's go ahead and jump right into the deck. So we got ourselves for Great Tusk. A Great Tusk is one of the new cards coming out of Temporal Forces that has a really, really good attack called Ground collapse where you could discard the top card of your opponent's deck and if you played an ancient supporter card from your hand you can discard three more cards which is really good all things considered because you're milling four if you play any of your ancient supporter cards which there are eight in the deck because there are only eight in the format so you play one of those and you're able to mill four you can imagine how that can actually be a win con on its own Next up, we do have a Radiant Greninja. Radiant Greninja, very uh, basic card. You're just going to conceal cards, throw away an energy, draw two, just to turbo through the deck. Very, very good card. So let's go ahead and talk about the Mimikyu. Mimikyu itself can actually be a really decent blocker. Like, if you're up against a deck that only plays EXs and Vs, and none of them have a shred ability, just putting Mimikyu in the active just gives you a win con on its own because, I mean, they can't do anything to the Mimikyu. So Mimikyu is actually really good in a lot of certain scenarios because you can hide behind it while you're trying to build up a great tusk or even just let it be your win con on its own. So really good card there. Next up, we have one copy of Comfe. Now I don't hate the copy of Comfe in here because being able to pivot with the new tool card that gives it one less retreat cost basically making it for free while you're able to flower select things out of your deck that are not necessary and keeping the things that are is actually really good because you can turbo through your deck just a little bit quicker and you have a pokemon that can reliably get in and out of the active after a knockout so really really like the comfort here the last pokemon in the deck is probably the most important pidgeot v pidgeot v is the most important card in the deck and i can hear you talking oh vulcan mill this, this guy, that's the most important, but no, stop. This is the most important card. And the reason being is because you're going to mill yourself out faster than you're going to mill your opponent at first. And the reason being is the certain supporter cards that are in the deck that we'll talk about here in a minute that make you cycle through your list very quickly. And you're very close to decking out by like turn four or five sometimes. Like if you really pop off, you're going to have no cards in the deck. That's where Pidgeot V comes in. If your opponent isn't playing something like Spirit Tomb, where Pidgeot can't bounce from the bench, that's a problem. But at the end of the day, this thing keeps you safe. No Spirit Tomb, just put it back in the deck and then you won't deck out. Very good card. So, we have Sada. Sada is the Ancient Supporter card. There are only two Ancient Supporter cards in the format right now, and Sada is one of them. And this came out in Paradox Rift. Now, if you're not familiar with Sada, we'll just talk about it for a second, but you can choose up to your Ancient Pokemon. Hello, Great Tusk. And you can accelerate a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of them, and you get to draw three cards. So if you have any energy that you threw away with the Greninja, you can just go ahead and put it onto your Great Tusk with the Professor Sada. And then if you have another energy in hand, that's two. And you're able to use Great Tusk's attack to start milling four because this is an ancient supporter. Next up, we have Explorer's Guidance. This is the new supporter that is coming out in Temporal Forces. This is the new ancient supporter and honestly really good card you get to look at the top six cards of your deck put two of them in your hand and discard the others this is what i'm talking about when it comes to the pidgeot you are going to cycle through your deck very quickly with just this card alone because you're looking at six and you're discarding four and it makes you have to prioritize what cards you're taking because some of them might not be able to return so explorer's guidance really good way to cycle through your list but also very dangerous to play if you're not paying attention and if you don't have the pidgeot v 
Next up, we have Airy. Airy doesn't have any synergy with the deck itself, like it's not an ancient supporter. We do only play 9 supporters in the list, but the reason why we play Airy is quite simple. Sometimes you need to hide behind a Pokemon in the active. So for instance, if I'm using Great Tusk and there's a big bulky Pokemon in the active that can knock out my Great Tusk, let's say it's like a Charizard with the Vitality Band, then they're just going to keep knocking out my Great Tusks. With Airy, what we can end up doing is we can play this to rip any sort of switch cards out of our opponent's hand and then use something like Custom Catcher to bring a different Pokemon from the bench into the active and try to keep that Pokemon in the active for as long as possible. The more switch cards you can rip with Airy, the better because now they can't get out of the active, you're just going to keep milling. So really, really good card. Now. I said before, Explorer's Guidance can be a problem because you can draw cards that you really need and then you can't get them back. Well, that is where the Pal Pad will come in because when it comes to Explorer's Guidance, you can only choose two of the six cards that you're drawing off of it. If they happen to be other ancient supporters that you need in order to start milling your opponent a little bit more effectively with the Great Tusk, then you're going to want these Pal Pads 100% because what you can do is if you throw away something like Sada's or if you throw away anything important uh, like the Airy or the Explorer's Guidance because you need a lot of them in order to kind of like mill out your opponent, the Pal Pad is going to come in clutch. This also gives us extra uses in Airy to make sure that we're throwing away our opponent's switch cards and any other harmful item cards that can actually benefit our opponent because we don't want them to have any benefits whatsoever. We want to mill them out of cards. Next up, we do have Super Rod. This also has that synergy piece to it when it comes to the Explorer's Guidance. It's kind of just a fail safe. Like if we play Explorer's Guidance and Pidgeot is one of the cards that we draw, but there's like two Sada, another Explorer's Guidance and a double turbo that we need to attack with. Yeah, we're probably not going to pick the Pidgeot, but if we have the Super Rod, it's quite easy to actually put the Pidgeot back into the deck and know that it's safe and we can use it later on in the game, which makes Explorer's Guidance a little less dangerous to play. So as long as we're able to cycle through our Pokemon a little bit, it's not a problem. Next up, we've got ourselves three trekking shoes. So this is how we're going to turbo through our list just a little bit faster. Yeah, we're already turbo through. We're turboing through the deck pretty quickly as it is, thanks to Sada and Guidance. But... The trekking shoes is pretty important here too because when it comes to needing energy or getting energy in the discard or anything else like that because of the sada you want to be able to get energy in the discard uh you can hit one off of shoes get it in discard draw a fresh card play sada and then you've got a fresh card in hand plus a sada to throw off any sort of energy from the discard onto your active great tusk so this is just another generic way to cycle through your deck very quickly i love this card in this list it's really really good Next up, we do have Pokegear 3.0. This card is super important to the list because, as I just stated, in order for Great Tusk to mill 4, we need to play an Ancient Supporter. Finding those Ancient Supporters is very important. So, for Pokegear 3.0, just being able to find them in the early game and getting a discard 4 from your opponent and, like, literally turn 1 going second is a huge advantage. So, being able to pay attention to what you throw away with the Great Tusk is very important. And knowing that you're able to hit more of your Ancient Supporters is very, very important. So, that is why we play the Pokegear. We need to consistently hit Ancient Supporters every turn. Well, maybe not every turn, but most turns because we do play Airy. All right, next up, we have Pokemon Search, and generically, we have four Nest Ball. All the Pokemon we play are basic Pokemon. We also have three Artisan. Now, there's only one Pokemon that in the deck that we play that is not a basic rule box or non rule box Pokemon. That is Pidgeot. That is a basic Pokemon with a rule box. So we can't find it with the Artisan, but everything else is fair game. So the Artisan is just another good piece of generic Pokemon Search. Uh, because as you can see with only four nest ball and rip a VIP pass, we don't have VIP pass and buddy, buddy puffin doesn't work on the great tusk. This is the only way that we're actually going to be able to consistently get our Pokemon onto the bench. And last for Pokemon search, we do have a heavy ball. Again, I reiterate the best Pokemon in this deck is Pidgeot V. And if you do end up prizing it and you're not in the position to be taking prizes, this is where being able to get the Pidgeot V is very important. We need to have the Pidgeot V because most of the time, while this deck can play like a hybrid deck, which can attack and mill because Great Tusk's attack does 160 and only 140 with a double turbo. But if you're in the position where you can't attack and you can't take prizes and you're more in a mill setup, Heavy Ball will be your savior because you will find your Pidgeot V from the prizes. Now, 
we do have three copies of earth and vessel this is where me and the japanese list do come to our differences i only play three earth and vessel while the japanese list plays four and i play three pal pad while the japanese list plays two so i downed an earth and vessel went up a pal pad because in my play testing i have found throwing away my supporters early because of this guy really sucks so this is where the differences end earthen vessel discard a card from your hand get to energy very good card because you do want to make sure that you're able to pop off your soda if there's no energy in the discard you can't even play your soda so you want to make sure that you get energy and discard and this is one of the best ways to actually do it because you can discard an energy and find more so not a bad card in the list at all Next up, we have Countercatcher. Now, we're probably not in the position to take a lot of prizes with this deck anyway, because the way Great Tusk works is you want to mill. Now, its other attack isn't bad whatsoever. It does do 140 with a double turbo, 160 without, but it's going to be hard to get two fighting and two cutlerless on it without the double turbo. So let's just call it 140. Going to be kind of hard to get 140 or 160 damage on the great tusk so yeah it's just gonna be 140 from this point forward anyway my point is it's hard to attack with great tusk most of the time and you want to make sure that you're just milling if you're in the position where you're behind which you most likely are going to be because you're not going to be taking prizes counter catcher is how we're going to trap certain pokemon into the active so we can mill without getting knocked out every turn so being able to this this is actually where Playing the deck smart becomes very important, right? Because if you're milling every turn and you're paying attention to what your opponent's throwing away, and then if you play airy and you throw away more switching cards or, or anything like that, and you notice your opponent doesn't have a lot of energy or a lot of switching cards left or even any in their deck, then what you can do is you can smartly play a counter catcher, lock up a giant Pokemon in the active that can't attack or can't retreat, and then you just start milling for the rest of the game. So being behind in prizes is kind of where Great Tusk loves to be because you're not really trying to catch up in the prize race anyway. You're just trying to mill your opponent out of cards. That's where counter catcher really comes in handy. Next up is the tools. We have three Bravery Charm. Bravery Charm in this deck is actually pretty goaded because what you can do with Bravery Charm is you could put it on something like the Mimikyu so you can survive something like a Cramorant attack. You could put it on the Pidgeot V so that way it has 260 HP. Not gonna survive too too much with that but another reason you can do it is because if you could put it on the Pidgeot and Vanishing Wings it away then you put two cards back in deck and that goes for every tool card uh great tusk will go all the way up to 190 which is pretty good because against a charizard without a vitality ban it actually ends up surviving which means you could possibly mill eight cards with one great tusk instead of just four cards with one great tusk which obviously the advantage just speaks in its own right there so three bravery charm Next up, we have one Ancient Booster Capsule Energy. This is a goaded card in this list. It's only one. I am considering taking out a Bravery Charm for a second Ancient Booster because honestly, Great Tusk with 200 HP is kind of gnarly. Now, this is where this is the new tool card, the Emergency Board. So the Pokemon that we usually want to retreat with, like the Kumpe, if you put this on a Kumpe, it has free retreat and you can kind of move in and out of the active and you can flower select without worrying about needing to attach to the Kumpe for the retreat. This right here gives you free retreat. And the, the reason it gives it free retreat is not because it doesn't have 30 HP. It's just because it reduces retreat cost by one. So even if Kumpe just had 30 hp remaining it doesn't really matter because it's going to be able to retreat regardless so honestly the emergency board is pretty goaded another good reason to play this emergency board is that if your pidgeot v actually gets stuck in the active or you start with the pidgeot v and because we play zero switching cards in this deck being able to attach this to your pidgeot v retreat it to bench and then vanishing wings it back into the deck is super amazing because you get two cards back in deck and your pidgeot v is no longer a two prize liability on the board <coughs> <laughs> our last tool card of the deck is the hero's cape what is better than a 200 hp great tusk yeah a 240 hp great tusk 40 more hp super awesome love this card it's super good in this deck there are arguments out there that maybe people should play different ones like the prime catch or other things honestly i think this works perfectly i love this card now to round out the deck we do have our energy count here it is four double turbo two psychic energy and we have four fighting energy the reason why we are playing the four double turbo is because on the great tusk if you can get two fighting energy on it and that's not too hard to do get two fighting energy onto it and attach a double turbo on the next turn you can swing for 140 if you need to do an attack but 
you also just want to make sure that you have energy cards in the discard so you can activate your sada now the reason we play the psychic is because in certain situations where you can stall out your opponent for a very very long time with the mimikyu you're actually able to just attack with the mimikyu so you can do 70 damage with mimikyu by just attaching a psychic and a double color or a double turbo a fighting or double psychic so being able to attack with mimikyu in some situations can actually be very very important so that is the list right there i really hope you guys want to pick this deck up because it's actually a really fun deck i will say the biggest weakness this deck does have is having low hp in a meta where a lot of the pokemon can just attack for just knockout all the time kind of sucks it's not great in those games but uh, another very very important card to be aware of when it comes to this deck is remember when i said the most important card is pidgeot v because if you, this is the only card that you can have remaining in your deck you could just keep finishing wings it back into the deck and it's not a big deal one card you need to look out for is mew ex if mew ex is in your opponent's deck they can copy the attack of great tusk and mill your pidgeot v causing you to deck out so make sure you're paying attention if your opponent is playing mew v but that is the deck i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comments what deck you want to see next and yeah I, you know uh play 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 the elephant play 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 the elephant